So today's lecture will going to be on vasculitis, that is the inflammation of the vessel walls. Now this inflammation occurs in diverse clinical settings and uh, you have to know the sound knowledge of how the inflammatory process affects the blood vessels and how eventually this leads to some severe disease of the blood vessels and overall the cardiovascular system. Now depending upon the vascular bed affected, the vasculitis might affect the central nervous system, it can affect heart or small bowel. Now these manifestations are widespread. So besides the findings referable to the specific tissue involved, clinical manifestations common to these entries typically include constitutional signs and symptoms such as fever, myalgias, arthralgias and malaise. Myalgia and arthralgia refers to the pain in the muscles and the joints, whereas malaise is the general body weakness. Vessels of n type in virtually any organ can be affected, and most vasculitis can affect all small vessels from arterioles to capillary to venules. Nevertheless, several of the vasculitis tend to affect only vessels of particular caliber or tissue beds. So now we can say that most of the uh, uh, the vasculitis it affects the iota and especially the abdominal iota and it can also affect equally the medium sized arteries while others principally affect small arterioles so these are basically the muscular portion of the blood vasculature now some 20 primary forms of vasculitis are recognized and their classification schemes uh, have been attempted to group them according to the vessel size role of immune complexes presence of specific anti autoantibodies which uh, autoantibodies are the antibodies form against your own tissue and the granuloma formation, organ tropism and even population demographics. Now uh, these are the things on which vasculitis is basically divided. Now the two most common pathogenic mechanisms of vasculitis are immune mediated me medi uh, inflammation and direct invasion of vascular walls by infectious pathogens. So predictably Infections can also indirectly induce a non-infectious vasculitis, for example by generating immune complexes or triggering cross-reactivity. In any given patient, it is critically important to distinguish between infectious and immunologic mechanisms because immunosuppression therapy, which is associated with the uh, immunologically induced vasculitis, is not appropriate for uh, the uh, infectious vasculitis and in fact it can actually aggravate the infectious vasculitis. So physical and chemical injuries such as um, irradi irradiation, mechanical trauma toxins can also cause vasculitis. So first we're going to discuss the non-infectious vasculitis. So as I told you earlier there are two things there is a non-infectious vasculitis and there's the infectious vasculitis. The non-infectious vasculitis is basically composed of the there is deposition of immune complexes around the body, around the blood vessels and uh, the main uh, immunological mechanisms that initiate non-infectious vasculitis are the immune complex deposition, the anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies and anti-endothelial cell antibodies. Now these are the three mechanisms by which there is non-infectious vasculitis in people. So firstly immune complex associated vasculitis. The lesions resemble those found in experimental immune complex mediated conditions like serum sickness antibody and complement are typically detected in vasculitis lesions Be basically these antibodies and complement system they are involved in the inflammation and in causing the deposition around the body so uh, although the nature of the antigens responsible for such a deposition cannot usually be determined now circulating immune antigen antibody complexes may also be seen like in the DNA anti DNA complexes in systemic lupus erythematosus L SLE disease which is associated with vasculitis now in this disease this um, there is a symptom of vasculitis and there is the circulating immune uh, complexes composing uh, composed of the DNA and uh, anti DNA complexes Next, uh, we have uh, the hypersensitivity reaction, uh, which caused the deposition of immune complex. And uh, to be particular about this, uh, we can consider penicillin. Now, the drugs bind to serum proteins, other agents like streptokinase, are themselves form proteins. 
So this penicillin is uh, basically involved in formation of different antibody and antigen complexes and deposition around the body causing vasculitis. So in either event, autoantibody, the antibodies are directed against the drug modified cell proteins or four molecules lead to the formation of immune complexes. Manifestations range across the spectrum of vasculitis frequently involving the skin. You have to be, uh, you have to know this that the uh, penicillin reaction, uh, in the penicillin reaction, there m there is always there all there is always skin manifestations, and this is the reason that manifestations range uh, across the spectrum of vasculitis and involves the skin, and it can be mild and self-limiting or severe or even fatal. So it is important to identify such orders, uh, disorders of hypersensitivities uh, before uh, the application of the drug. Now, in vasculitis associated secondarily with the viral infection, there is associated there is formation of antibody and antigen complexes. That is the immune complexes. Now, antibody here are basically formed against the viral proteins, and uh, they are detectable in the serum and vascular lesions. Now, almost 30% of the patients with polyarthritis nodosa having an underlying hepatitis B infection with vasculitis. This is attributable attributable to the complexes of hepatitis B surface antigen that is the uh, HBSAG antigen and the antibodies to the uh, to this antigen this, which is the HBSAG AB and uh, so uh, these antigen antibodies uh, these are actually present in the polyarthritis nodosa cases and uh, so uh, this actually proves our point that uh, when there's a viral infection it causes a non-infectious vasculitis. So, by infection, we mean the uh, there is uh, an active infection by a pathogen, which is and which is always like some bacteria or other blood-borne pathogen. Now we have uh, next is the anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies, which are known as the ANSAs, A N C A's. So many patients with vasculitis have circulating antibodies that react with the neutrophil cytoplasmic antigens, so called the ANSAs. Now the ANSAs are a heterogeneous group of autoantibodies directed against the constituents of neutrophils, their granules. Now neutrophils, as you know, are granulated by both cells and they contain all sorts of uh, stuff in their granules. So these antibodies are basically against those granules and uh, they are, there are also ANSAs which act against the monocyte lysosomes products and endothelial cells as well. So there are the two general type of ANSAs which are basically involved in uh, causing vasculitis are uh, the cytoplasmic like uh, one of them is the cytoplasmic localization uh, localization C ANSA which is present in the cytoplasm wherein and the most common target for this C ANSA is the proteinase 3 PR3 a neutrophil granule constituent. Now the next most common uh, ANSA is the P ANSA which is localized in the perinuclear lesion uh, region wherein most of the autoantibodies um, are spe uh, specific for myeloperoxidase enzymes. So uh, these enzymes are naturally pres present in your cytoplasm or your uh, nucleus and uh, this leads to the, their, um, the autoantibodies are basically formed against these products and those autoantibodies are basically involved in attacking the vascular vasculature causing inflammation and um, eventually vasculitis. So either ANSA specificity can occur in ANSA associated vasculitis but C ANSA is typical of Wegener granulomatosis and P ANSA is found in most cases of microscopic polyangiitis and Churg Strauss syndrome. So these are the vasculitis containing syndromes, uh, the vasculitis the main, their main feature and uh, this these uh, anti neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies are involved in causing vasculitis in these syndromes. So we, we uh, do some classification and characteristics of uh, selected immune mediated vasculitis which is vasculitis. Now vascul vasculitis types and uh, I'm going to give you the examples. There is a large vessel vasculitis as I told you earlier iota is the main uh, uh, blood vessel which gets affected by the 
vasculitis. So we have a large vessel vasculitis, iota, and large blanches to the extremities, head and neck, uh, like your internal carotid, and uh, the extremities involve, uh, involving like the brachial artery, the axillary, etc. So these are the large vessel vasculitis, and um, though these vessels are basically affected in it, and uh, the patient has a granulomatous inflammation. There are granulomas formation in the blood vessels, which are visible to the microscope. And uh, we have um, examples of the giant cell arthritis, the temporal arthritis. Now, this giant cell temporal arthritis is uh, one of the vasculitis of uh, your temporal artery. And uh, it has a lot of manifestations, and we're going to study this in detail. And another large vessel vasculitis is the Takayasu arthritis, which is also the granulomatous inflammation, and uh, um, it occurs in the younger people. So these are just the examples. We are going to discuss those in the detail of uh, the next lecture of vasculitis. Now, the medium vessel vasculitis, which um, affects the main visceral arteries and their branches. We have uh, the polyarthritis no nodosa, Necrotizing, which is the necrotizing inflammation typically involving the renal arteries but sparing the pulmonary vessels. So, uh, this uh, polyarthritis nodosa is uh, the medium vessel vasculitis. And, uh, the, and uh, very important is the Kavis uh, Kawasaki disease. Now, the Kawasaki disease is the uh, vasculitis of the coronary arteries, and uh, most of the deaths, is, it usually occurs in children, and most of the deaths are due to coronary arteries aneurysm so now we are also going to tell you how the vasculitis cause aneurysm so um, this vasculitis basically leads to aneurysm in a way that uh, it weakens the smooth musculature which is a media layer of the blood vessels once the inflammation does occur the intima grows and uh, the media gets pushed inside and um, over time it actually deteriorates causing the loss of uh, my strong musculature. This is the reason of aneurysms, a very common aneurysms being produced during the vasculitis uh, disease. So uh, there are the third one is the small vessel vasculitis which uh, 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 which happens to be occur in the arterioles, the venules, the capillaries. Now these are the small vessels and uh, these include uh, the Wegener granulomatosis which I told you that C. ANSA is involved in Wegener granulomatosis and uh, this granulomatous inflammation involving the respiratory tract and uh, the necrotizing vasculitis um, affecting small vessels and uh, apart from that we have Chog Strauss syndrome in which the P. ANSAs are involved and um, there is microscopic polyangitis in which the necrotizing uh, which is the necrotizing small vessel vasculitis with few or no immune deposits. Now, so microscopic polyangitis is one of uh, those um, specific uh, exclusions from our non-infectious vasculitis as uh, there is uh, very little deposition of immune complexes. So uh, this is just a general um, introduction to vasculitis. Uh, there is a lot of uh, detail that is needed to uh, that we will going to uh, uh, cover in our next lecture which will include the giant cell arthritis, the Takayusa, the all those examples I've given you we will going to study them in, date, in detail now uh, this is our first lecture of uh, pathology we're going to cover a lot of subjects in medicine I'm going to give you lectures on almost all the subjects and uh, hopefully it will help you during your medical school so kindly leave a comment if you uh, think we can improve somehow and uh, there's always a room if Im room of improvement so hopefully we'll be seeing you again thank you